Okay, so again, our discrete expression is for every interval of our x partition, the width of the partition is going to be expressed by delta x sub i. Within the partition, we partition our y values from negative a squared minus xi squared to a squared minus square root of a squared minus xi star squared. Um, not, I'm sure, not sure I said all my stars. Um, and we're going to then partition it into m sub i sub intervals of this type. Okay. And within each interval, we're going to have a sample point xi star, yij star, width delta xi uh, height delta yij. So the area is delta xi times delta yij. And the density is going to be approximated as a constant. Whatever the value is here, we're going to assume that applies over the entire rectangle. So it's going to be rho of xi star, yij star. So this rho density multiplied by the delta yij times the xi, delta xi, gives us the mass of the partition, uh, uh, of the uh, small rectangle in the partition. Now, for any i, we let the width of the y intervals approach zero, and in the process, this sum here in parentheses approaches the integral from the limits of the partition, negative square root of a minus xi squared to square root of a squared minus xi squared. I don't think I said all that right, but there they are. Okay? Giving us limits from negative a squared minus xi squared to square root of a squared minus xi squared. And would be integrating rho of xi star y with respect to y between these limits. Then we take that integral for every subinterval, multiply it by the width of the subinterval, sum it up from i equals 1 to n, and we have our total volume, or our total mass. So the total mass, uh, well, as we approach the integral here, as we let, if, as we refine the partition of our x interval from negative a to a, we get the integral from negative a to a with respect to x of this expression. But now our xi star becomes just plain old x. It becomes continuous. And the xi's here become just plain old x's. And here is our integral. And this integral, depending on our row of xy function, uh, might be easy to integrate. Uh, it might be impossible to integrate, or anywhere in between. It depends on this function. Um, so that's the process of multiple integration in two dimensions for this one specific application. The task of multiple integration in general is describe the region in terms of inequalities then build the integral. To describe this region in terms of inequalities, we simply say that uh, negative a is less or equal to x is less or equal to a and for any x, the square root of a minus x squared is less than or equal to y, negative square root, is less than or equal to the square root of a squared minus x squared. So, x can go from negative a to a, and for any value of x, y goes from negative square root of a minus x squared to positive square root of a minus x squared. 
this description gives us the limits on our integral. The limits on x are negative a to a. The limits on y are negative square root of a minus x squared to square root of a minus x squared. And we're integrating the inner integral with respect to y, the outer integral with respect to x. Whatever function it is we're integrating, that's going to be it.